Education in the Kickstarter, we're going to be talking about how best we can make parents partners in education. Well, as the implementation of the new all-level uh, curriculum continues, some experts whose work led to the ideas that are inbuilt in the curriculum believe there are things that have been left out but would enrich the learning experience for the students. One of the disconnects is that the curriculum is not attempting to co-opt parents as part of the process and instead continues to treat them as cash cows, yes, cash cows, who just have to pay and get out of the way. To talk to us about this and more, I have Mr. Collins Tugumi Sirize, a consultant whose work played a part in the new curriculum. And I also have Mrs. Mary Goretti Katusabe Semwezi, who is the academic registrar of Victoria University, Uganda. Many thanks for having made the time to join us right here on Morning at NTV. A very good morning. Good morning. Thank mm -hmm. you. Good morning. Let me start with you, Mr. Tugumi Sirize. What do you think is the cause of the disconnect uh -huh, between the general public and the educationists on this new curriculum? Thank you. The major cause you see mm. is that these two groups have different interests mm -hmm. and also have different uh, uh, goals and intentions for the curriculum. Oh, so you find an educationist interest mm. is, has a lot to do with, with uh, what they went to school for, what they've been doing for the last 30 mm. years, and then their salary mm -hmm. and how secure is it and how continuing. And then you find uh, the public our parents, our employers, our politician leaders, and the like. So their interest is, uh, is the person ready to work? Is, are they going to be productive? Or will the co if it is a parent, is the cost going to go down? Uh, will my child uh, have uh, a better opportunities, both local and internationally? And then for the politicians is, is, uh, is again, uh, uh, are people, <laughs> the public, comfortable with the new thing? Mm -hmm before it's not so much about the detail. Mm -hmm. So I think that's where the disconnect is. Their vested interests are different, and therefore, and then secondly, their language is different. When educationists are speaking, they don't, are not speaking the language of the people. They talk about holistic, obsolete, uh, what, competency-based, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and the parent has no clue about that. Mm -hmm. The politician has no clue about that. Mm -hmm. So yet there is simple English, because all these people have been to school. Mm -hmm. So if that English can be used mm -hmm. in all simplicity, mm -hmm. then their intentions can be better communicated and there can be better dialogue. So the technical terms might be causing the major disconnect between the general public I think so. and <coughs> the educationists. Mi I think Mrs. Merrison, uh, tell us in your own opinion, what is causing the major disconnect? I think the disconnect comes from the fact that our, first of all, let's face it, our population in this country largely is not um, as educated as we would wish it to be. That's mm -hmm. one. There's a part of our parents mm -hmm. who did not go to school mm -hmm. or who went just a little bit to school and they are expected to understand these things, mm -hmm. but they don't. That's one area mm -hmm. that causes this, that disconnect. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, when NCDC, the National Curriculum Development Center, made its efforts, I think more could have been done. Mm. To, for instance, tell somebody, when you say you want somebody who is competent, what exactly are you saying? Mm -hmm. Are you telling me I should be able to get a hole and properly dig? Are you telling me I should have a good handwriting? What exactly are you saying? So I think that is part of the problem. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, it's the reason why you see people saying this curriculum is bad. This curriculum, we don't understand it. But I think if there was more sensitization of our parents, more sensitization of our business community, because let's face it, every profession has mm -hmm. got terms mm -hmm. that are unique to them. Mm -hmm. People say when a doctor writes, I cannot read, I cannot understand. Similarly, when the teacher talks about competence, based, a mm -hmm. competence-based curriculum. What are we saying? Mm -hmm. All we are saying is that departing from what we've had previously, mm -hmm. the kind of system yeah, that has been on, where pupils go to school, they learn to write, they learn to read, they get all the information, you learn about the Great Lakes of America, mm -hmm. you learn about Kenya, you learn about everything, but you know so little about your own little village. Indeed. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, going forward, therefore, there was need to educate everyone to understand these things. I agree with Collins. Break the words down. If you say 
the curriculum is more pupil centered, mm -hmm. more learner centered. Mm -hmm. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. For a teacher, that's common language, it's everyday stuff. Mm -hmm. But when you talk about pupil centered, all you are saying is whatever you are doing mm -hmm. must improve, must impact the learner. Mm -hmm. It's not you. What you are saying is if you are saying they must be critical thinkers, give them challenges, don't feed them. Students will ask for notes. Mm -hmm. We know this. Yes, that yes. Students will say, so and so, teacher so and so is so bad. Why? He doesn't give notes. She doesn't recap for us and so on. But the little I've been able to understand about this curriculum is that instead of doing that, get the child to deal with the challenge. Mm -hmm. Get the child to know what are the reasons behind this particular phenomenon mm -hmm. rather than you sit and say this happens because of this the rain comes because of this mm -hmm. and so on and so forth mm -hmm. so the disconnect definitely is there mm -hmm. we need to sensitize our population we need to try out this curriculum mm -hmm. it has definitely there are gaps that mm -hmm. could be better mm -hmm. but we need to try it out mm -hmm. curriculum is not a static thing mm -hmm. curriculum evolves over time Mr. Tukumi said is a how best can we bridge this gap and involve the parents in the education of their children I think of for starters ministry of education or the mm -hmm. educationist mm -hmm. could hire communication experts like advertisers like uh, uh, marketeers and things like that and once they have that conversation mm -hmm. uh, they will be able people introduce very complicated products in the economy mm -hmm. but you find that uh, the community is able to understand it because mm -hmm. an advertiser has helped communicate or introduce it i also think that uh, from the, the politicians perhaps also need to be supported better mm -hmm. because they are very key in this process and uh, you could uh, this uh, you do not make the the laws that are around curriculum and the like mm -hmm. show don't don't give much room for flexibility or continuous improvement mm -hmm. so if there is such a law or so and involve them in what this means mm -hmm. they would come up to speed to understand mm -hmm. what it means to change then uh, thirdly, I also believe that uh, what can be done to bridge this gap is the people on the board mm -hmm. of the Curriculum Development Center mm -hmm. should be the consumers of education. For instance, mm -hmm. if it is private sector foundation or it is uh, NSSF, the workers union, those kind of people should be the people on the board of the mm -hmm. Curriculum Development, should be the board of the examination, mm -hmm. because what these people are producing is ultimately they are the consumers and they're representing the parents and the like uh, manufacturers association things like that now when when uh, these are the people on the board it means that the technocrats or uh, have to explain whatever they're to simple-minded people who who want to know how does it work in the real world mm -hmm. and then these people will give them feedback on how to either communicate or how to do it better or or even to define what is obsolete and not mm -hmm. obsolete. Now, in practical terms, I would also say that uh, give an illustration of what is obsolete, what is unholistic, what is incompetent, mm -hmm. and then give the example of what is competent, holistic, mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. it is a clear contrast. Eh? I, uh, and if someone sees this is actually obsolete, mm -hmm. this is now, mm -hmm. called, and then that would help uh, bridge the gap. Mm -hmm. Now, Mrs. So Goretti. I just want to okay. add something mm -hmm. in terms uh, of bridging mm -hmm. the gap. Mm -hmm. I think schools and parents have got a better opportunity than they've ever had before to deal with what goes on in the school, to understand what goes on in the school. Because most schools, I can't say all of them, have got what you call class days. Parents interacting with the teachers. This is a channel that can be used to enable the parents to understand holistic, <laughs> understand <laughs> contents <laughs> best mm -hmm. they can help them to understand them because as we you go forward and you are skilling this student mm -hmm. what happens when this student is not with you as a teacher it goes back the student goes back home mm -hmm. and when the student g goes back home parent ought to be able to add Indeed. value to what has been done at school if you've been telling this child at school it's not good to misuse school property when I get home, because we have a thousand cups in the home and I'm breaking 20 every day, what value will I add as a parent? Will I caution this student? Will I show this student where these cups come from? And so on and so forth. So I think there is a lot of partnering that the, the parents 
and the school can do. Mm -hmm. They already have structures in schools that bring parents, teachers together. Mm -hmm. They should not just talk about money, but they should talk about these things that directly mm. affect the learners in the schools. When we talk about uh, uh, things affecting learners directly, we must talk about sexuality education, a very vital subject that the teachers don't want to touch on and mm. the parents don't mm. want to touch on. But according to the educationists, mm. it would be proper for the parents to take on the mandate mm. uh, to talk about sexuality education with their children. Mm. In your opinion, what should be the requisite way to go about this? Is it the parent to actually teach the students sexuality education or is it the okay. role of the teacher okay. who have more information in that regard? It's the role of every one of us. Be you parent, grandparent like me, mm -hmm. um, you've got a role to play. But we must know the context in which we are talking. Mm -hmm. Our culture setup prohibits us from talking about certain things. But we must find a way around it. Mm -hmm. When a student comes home and, ask, and is asking questions, don't take them round and round and round. If you are not able to directly answer this question as a parent, you have friends. You have elder sisters. An elder sister will talk better to a young one than you might. Mm -hmm. So you must be selective, in my view, mm -hmm. how you bring out sexual education. And if you don't, somebody else is going to talk to your child for you. I recall a child, I was sitting with a, a friend in her sitting room, and this child wanted to know, Mommy, what is a virgin? Mm. We were all thrown into this array. I ventured an answer, and I said, virgin is like, let's say, you see that bush out there? <laughs> it has not yet been mm -hmm. <laughs> utilized, so, so it is virgin bush. land. I was beating around the bush. Mm. But eventually, I realized we were going the wrong way. Mm. Then I got closer, and my friend also got closer. So we told this little girl, mm. a virgin is a young girl who is not yet married. Mm. And we thought we had done it. Mm -hmm. They said, oh, like me? Yes, like you. But when her big brother came from school, mm. she put the question to him. And he gave a different answer. Yes, and the boy slapped the little girl. And the little girl went running to the mother. But cut the long story short mm. is, it's a challenge. Sexual education is a challenge. But we should be telling children, in my view, mm how to relate to the opposite sex, mm -hmm. how far play can go, how far this can go, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And bring in certain traditional systems. Um, the Uganda Kingdom has, I think, done something that many cultures could emulate. Mm -hmm. They put structures like the Chisakate teaches people, mm -hmm. The, you hear of the kojas and the like, although some people are turning it into a business, mm -hmm. which I don't subscribe to, I feel as a parent you ought to know which friend of mine mm -hmm. can help my child. Mm -hmm. What information can I share? What literature can she read? Can he read? What discussion can we have when they ask? So it takes a lot of selective approach mm -hmm. to deal with sexual education mm -hmm. in our cultural setup. But times have come, they will read these things, they will hear these things, and if they are not prepared at all, mm. it will be a disaster. So we need to somehow prepare them selectively. M Mr. Tugumis, it is a yes. I, well, I know you, you want to expound on well, that, but on then the new curriculum mm. did not pronounce itself on the issue of sexuality education. How best can we go about it to inculcate these values or some of this information to the to students with the help of the parents? Uh, I think when you're looking at some of the, the aspects like mm. sexuality education, mm. Uh, there is a, you need to look at education has a system, has all these uh, topics and then the way it's designed and you see whether it can actually accommodate such, a, uh, such an aspect. Mm -hmm. However, I noticed that there is, a to there is a subject called physical education and uh, it's so much oriented around uh, maybe sports or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then you, you try to find uh, where, where does actually, how does sexuality, what's the best way model. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in most schools they have these kind of dances or what you call uh, this kind of socializing uh, opportunity, eh? mm. social, social opportunity where boys meet girls and they dance and the like, eh? which are very special. Now, such opportunities can be used to teach girls their femininity and their the confidence around it, and then boys their masculinity, and then uh, the, the honor around it. And then uh, in the dance, there are a number of dances that, that have a lot to do with that communication eh? of what sexuality is about and... Uh, the, the beauty of it and uh, and, uh, and 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 why it's, it's 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 it matters and what does not matter so that there is limited abuse 
But when you see the system, the way it's designed, it's so information-based. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So just um, a, a lot needs to change, eh? mm -hmm. and people will pay attention to what will be examined at the exam, not what will just be for, for goodness sake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the challenge. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let's veer away from sexuality <laughs> education and get back to the new <laughs> curriculum. Well, government says the objective of this curriculum change is to remove obsolete knowledge the word is coming back obsolete knowledge and integrate related knowledge uh, based on relevance societal needs and national goals they also contend that this will go a long way in stopping the uh, practice of cramming of concepts which is the status quo do you think this is real change or merely a facelift i'll start with you uh, miss samuez yes it is expected to be a real change mm. But it, I think it is going to take a lot of time. And I have worries about this. Please go ahead. My worry is this, that whether we like it or not, the exam system is still something that propels people forward, that we look to, my child going where, mm -hmm. which school will this child go to, which university will the child go to, and so on and so forth. And remember, you've got this teacher who has been teaching since time immemorial, giving facts, giving knowledge, being the source of knowledge. But as we know today, that status quo of the teacher has changed dramatically. Mm. If you go to class, whether you are a lecturer, whether you are who, and you think you are the only source of knowledge, you'll be telling yourself pure lies. Why? Because information is abundant today. People have access to information. But this teacher at all level, if he has not, if she has not been taken through a proper orientation to teach differently, to approach a subject differently, to make the student think critically, remember that these teachers did not go through the same system that taught them to think critically, that taught them to do this like the curriculum is trying to do. Therefore, to me, there is enormous work still to be done by NCDC by our Ministry of Education to orient the teacher. There must be real investment into teacher orientation, into tutor orientation. Mm -hmm. The people who churn out these teachers, they must be reoriented to look at the demands of this curriculum. Mm -hmm. The competent teacher mm -hmm. of yesterday might not be the competent teacher of today. That holistic person we are talking about, teaching the all-round person, mm -hmm. then will not be mm. harvested. Mm. We need to reorient the teachers, mm. to reorient the head teachers, to reorient our parents to move in the same direction as the school, as the curriculum objectives go. Amazing. I think, mm. I think uh, there, is, there, is, uh, there may not be real change mm -hmm. because uh, if you say what national goals or what is obsolete and the like, when you look what at the curricula, what anymore. is not working yes. anymore, mm. the subjects that are there are still the same, mm. and the information is still the same, knowledge-based, mm. and that information is actually not working in the field. I don't solve problems using uh, physics or chemistry or what we're doing here. However, I think what can be, what can be done is uh, make a shift mm -hmm. from uh, you know, teaching science, sciences or arts mm -hmm. rather than teaching the knowledge of science and arts. Teach the science and the arts. What do I mean by this? Uh, someone can, be, uh, can absorb or cram the knowledge of science but not learn science and not become a scientist. Mm -hmm. Someone can absorb the knowledge of art. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so the key is there that uh, in arts, the purpose of art is to adopt a purpose-driven approach to these things. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of arts? What's the purpose of science? Once you get from that angle, mm -hmm. you'll notice that the purpose of art is to, 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 to train people how to perceive and change their world based on how they feel and who they are. And when you use that, that means you're building their instincts. And, uh, their, sorry, their intuition. Mm -hmm. And then the purpose of science is to, is to shape their perception 
and change the world so that they can perceive the world and change the world based on how it works. It mm -hmm. has a way it works, how mm -hmm. things work. Mm -hmm. So you want to understand that and you want to change based on that. And that influences the behavior and instincts of a person. Amazing. So that's what I think should be ad adopted, purpose-driven. And, and Mr. Tugmisi, the mm -hmm. government has tried so hard to consult the stakeholders about this new curriculum, but some of those stakeholders claim that they either do not understand the new curriculum or are not satisfied with the contents of the new curriculum. What do you make about that? I think that is going to be the case continuously because changing curriculum is being made like an event, mm -hmm. a big event, rather than a progressive thing. So, for instance, if there is so a it's law... reactive, not it, proactive. Yes, unless there is a... Every two years, this thing should change. Mm -hmm. Secondly, the people who are in charge of change should not be the teachers. It should be the, 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 the heads of business, the heads of... Uh, the employers, the workers' union, the, the, the people out there should be the people on these boards who are the consumers. Then you can see curriculum changing. Most important is... UNEB, the examination board, has to be the one that does the real drives the change. Mm -hmm. That the way in which whatever is going to be changed can be changed uh, should should come from that place. And then I, I must say that uh, the reason why people are failing to connect to this, how it should be done, is from a culture point. How do you change culture? Mm -hmm. You change people's beliefs about what they are doing. You change people's uh, practices and the like. I'm, let me give an example. For instance, if you want to real change it, eh, you should change physics to, say, technology, mm -hmm. change chemistry to productivity, change uh, mathematics to systems, change these, these subjects, don't, be, don't stay, keep them. Mm -hmm. So when you change the subjects, mm -hmm. and, uh, and also one of the subjects I proposed in those days that should be included is a subject called how to learn. How to learn. Yes. People should be taught how to remember, how to memorize, should be taught how to focus, should be taught on how to learn uh, math uh, arithmetics, mathematics. The, the whole, there are many tools on how to learn. Okay, let's so we are learning yes. and we are never yeah. taught how to learn. Let's finalize this conversation with Ms. Goretti. The okay, new curriculum I, yeah. is... Okay, you're going, to, you're going to expand on that. But the new curriculum <laughs> is yes. already being rolled out. Yes. Whether the teachers, the politicians, mm. the parents are ready or not, the mm. new curriculum is being rolled out. Mm. So suppose these stakeholders embrace the new curriculum. What would be the most effective way of implementing this new curriculum? Thank you. To me, the most effective way of implementing this curriculum is working together Amen. and learning. The system itself must be prepared to learn. Uh, if it is the parent complaining, what are their complaints about? If it is the business community, what is their complaint about? What is their contribution? And it must be in partnership. Um, the one who drives this curriculum should not be one single sector of our community. Mm. The schools have a role to play. The teacher has a role to play. UNEP comes at the end, by the way, and its business is how am I going to examine. Mm -hmm. And how I'm going to examine sometimes also informs mm -hmm. how am I going to teach. Mm -hmm. And that is part of the cure that this curriculum is trying to do. Mm -hmm. Other than just what am I going to examine, what am I going to learn? Mm -hmm. What has the learner benefited Amazing. from the Mr. system. Mr. Collins, in yes. a nutshell, how mm -hmm. much can implement this new How program? best at this time, mm -hmm. now that mm -hmm. it is here and we have no way, mm -hmm. is incentives. Mm -hmm. Work around the area of incentives. The, if if they in create incentives for teachers, mm -hmm. create incentives for students, mm -hmm. create incentives for public, mm -hmm. and then also get into the media, get advertisers, marketeers to help with cartoons, with pictures, with illustrations on how to make sure this this thing is becomes a public mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. not a, 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 a technocrat That's issue. That's another big word. I've incentives. Seen, I've seen comic strips. Incentives. I've seen what comic, are incentives? I've, I've seen yes, comic incentives. Strips yes. About uh, renewable energy. Have, have you seen those? <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the, the, they help you connect. Mm. The, they help the, the public mm. connect, mm. no matter whether you're a leader. Yeah. Or you are, or your child, you will connect to it and you'll understand. Collins to Gumi Citizen and Mrs. Goretti Samwezi, thank you for having made the time to speak with us. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. The uh, conversation has been centered around how best we can help parents actually be a part of the education of their children in that regard. Let's take a very short break. We'll be right back with Jumia Tech Week. I have Mr. Ron Kawamara already here. We'll be right, right back with that conversation and a lot more. Keep it here.